Azure Virtual Machines, Function Apps, App Services, Containers and Kubernetes Services. All these are amongst the most popular Azure services. But how many of you can tell what is the most common thing between all of these services? Maybe not all of you, but I am sure that all of you want to learn these exciting Azure concepts. So stick around to this video and learn something new today. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Black Bowl. In today's episode 11, we are going to start our section 2.2, Describe Azure Compute and Networking Services. In this section, we will start with the subsection 2.2.1. And that is compare compute types, including container instances, virtual machines and functions. In the subsequent part, we will cover the section 2.2.2, where we will describe virtual machine options, including virtual machines, virtual machine skill sets, availability sets and Azure virtual desktop. And then will come describe resources required for the virtual machines, which will be section 2.2.3. We will then see how to describe application hosting options, including Azure Web Apps, containers and virtual machines. And this will be the section 2.2.4. Moving ahead in section 2.2.5, we will understand how to describe virtual networking, including the purpose of Azure virtual networks, Azure virtual subnets, pairing, Azure DNS, VPN gateway and express route. And the final section 2.2.6, will be to define public and private endpoints. And friends, if you want to keep learning Azure Cloud, please consider subscribing to the channel. Press that bell icon so that you are notified of all these detailed videos on Azure Cloud, which will help you boost your cloud career. So let's start today's session with understanding Azure Compute. According to Microsoft, whether you are building a new application or deploying existing ones, Azure Compute provides the infrastructure that you need to run your apps. Tap into the compute capacity in the cloud and scale on demand, containerize your application, deploy Windows and Linux virtual machines and take advantage of flexible options for migrating virtual machines to Azure. With comprehensive support for hybrid environments, deploy how and where you want to. Azure Compute also includes full-fledged identity solutions so you gain managed endpoints protection and active directory support that helps you secure access to on-premises and cloud apps. Deploy great apps and save with pay-as-you-go pricing and the Azure Hybrid benefit. Now this definition tells you a lot about Azure Compute. First key term in this definition is infrastructure. So Azure Compute provides the infrastructure and then it gives you a hint about Azure Virtual Machines containers are some of the example of Azure Compute. Now friends, do you know what are more examples of Azure Compute services? Well, let's go to the Azure portal itself and try to find out. Now friends, this is the Azure portal. I am already logged in and I am on the home page of my Azure portal. On the left hand side, you can see this menu. You have to click on this all services option and then you will land up to this page. And on this page, you can see there is a category section. So Azure has categorized all its services into various compartments. So here you can see that we have general, compute, networking, storage, web. So in case friends, you have any confusion, which service of Azure falls into which category, Azure portal is the best place to find that. But for now, we are interested in compute services. So let's click on that. And friends, in this section now, you can find all the Azure services that comes under the compute category. We have Azure Virtual Machines, Azure Virtual Machine Skill Sets, App Services, Batch Accounts, Azure Cloud Services, and many more. Coming back, so friends, if I have to define Azure Compute in simple words, I would say that in cloud computing, the term compute describes the concept and objects related to the software computation. It's a generic term used to reference processing power, memory, networking, storage and other resources required for computational success of any program. And as you just saw, services like virtual machines, containers are related to providing computing power. Now let's understand what are the different types of Azure Compute services. Well, to be honest, as we saw, there are a lot of Azure Compute services. Just a while back, I showed you many compute services on Azure portal. 
But as far as EZ900 exam is concerned and as per the Microsoft syllabus, we need to focus on compute types including Azure Virtual Machines, Container Instances and Functions. So let's start with understanding Azure Virtual Machines. So friends, Azure Virtual Machines are image service instances. Virtual Machine is an on-demand, scalable computer resource that is available in Azure. A virtual machine behaves like a server or a computer that provides the user the same experience as they would have on the host operating system itself. Very simply put, think of a virtual machine as a laptop in Azure Cloud but excluding the hardware part. Hopefully, you now understand Azure Virtual Machines. Let's first quickly understand Azure Container Instances and Azure Function App and then we will come back to the Virtual Machines and understand what are the different types and series of Azure Virtual Machines. So as per Microsoft, Azure Container Instances is a solution for any scenario that can operate in isolated containers without orchestration, run event-driven applications, quickly deploy from your container development pipelines and run the data processing and build jobs. So exactly what can you build with Azure Container Instances? Let's find out. So this is the Microsoft documentation on Azure Container Instances. Let's see what Microsoft has to say about Azure Containers. Let's check out the quick overview. It says develop apps fast without managing virtual machines or having to learn new tools is just your application in a container running in the cloud. Further, Microsoft says that run containers without managing servers. What it means is that by running your workloads in Azure Container Instances, you can focus on designing and building your applications instead of managing the infrastructure that wants them. What's more, you also get increased agility with containers on demand and then containers also secure applications with hypervisor isolation. Let's scroll down and see what you can use containers for. Here Microsoft says that elastic bursting with AKS. So this says that ACI provides fast isolated compute to meet traffic that comes in spikes without the need to manage servers. For example, Azure Kubernetes service can use virtual kubelet to provision pods inside ACI that starts in seconds. This enables AKS to run with just enough capacity for your average workload and then you can also burst out of the capacity in your AKS cluster, scale out additional pods in ACI without any additional servers to manage. What else you can build? Well, event driven application with Azure Logic Apps and also data processing jobs. So a lot of good information is given in this documentation. And as always, you will find the links to all the documentation in the description box and in the pinned comment. Now let's jump on to the Azure Functions, a very interesting service indeed. And as per Microsoft, Azure Functions is a cloud service available on demand that provides all the continually updated infrastructure and the resources needed to run your applications. You focus on the code that matters most to you in the most productive language for you and the functions handles the rest. Let's understand functions a little bit more. Here Microsoft says that Azure Functions is a serverless solution that allows you to write less code, maintain less infrastructure and save on cost. Instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers, the cloud infrastructure provides all up-to-date resources needed to keep your applications running. And friends, I really encourage you to watch this video here given on this documentation. Further, the documentation says that we often build systems to react to a series of critical events. Whether you are building a web API, responding to a database changes, processing IoT data streams or even managing message queues, every application needs a way to run some code as these events occur. To meet this need, Azure Functions provide compute on demand in two significant ways. The first one is that Azure Functions allows you to implement your system logic into a readily available block of code. These code blocks are called functions. Different functions can run anytime you need to respond to critical events. Secondly, as the requests increase, Azure Functions meet the demand with as many resources and Azure instances as necessary but only while needed. As the requests fall, any extra resources or the application instances 
drop off automatically so two very important features of azure functions are listed here the first one you have to understand that azure functions are event driven so basically they are executed whenever a particular event is triggered and then the second most important feature of azure function is that they will scale as per your demand so if the demand is increasing azure function will also increase the resources and the beauty is that when the demand comes down the resources will also drop off and friends i'm sure that many of you would be interested in azure functions and would like to know what exactly you can use azure functions for and for that you can come down to this documentation section which says scenarios and here you can see that if you want to so basically microsoft has listed some use cases where you can use azure functions it says that if you want to build a web api then implement an endpoint for your web application using http trigger and similarly lot of other use cases are listed here please come down to this documentation and understand azure functions it's a really great service and will definitely help you in your daily azure functioning okay so friends here i want to give you a little bit more information on azure functions See, as a developer, you want to focus on writing code instead of worrying about deploying and maintaining servers. Okay, so now here I show you a simple Azure function which just inserts a single column in Azure SQL database. Nothing fancy, a simple function that I wrote in C Sharp, but good to start with Azure functions. By the way, this is not the complete code. I took it from my very old blog on WordPress. If any one of you want this code, ping me in the comment section and I will share the GitHub link for the same. Anyways, what I want to emphasize that in Azure functions, you just write an event driven code in the language that you want, throw it to the Azure functions and there it goes ready to listen to the events and execute no tension to learn the new language or breaking your head on deployment servers nothing it's just you and your code rest all is taken care by microsoft azure function service and before we close today's episode let's summarize today we learn how to describe azure virtual machines azure container instances and azure function apps in the coming episodes, we are going to learn about Azure Virtual Machine Scale Sets, Availability Sets, Azure Virtual Desktop, Azure Web Apps and Containers. We will also learn about Azure Virtual Network, Azure Virtual Subnets, Peering, Azure DNS, VPN Gateway and Express Route. So as you can see, a whole array of Azure Cloud Learning is coming up. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon to receive timely notification so that you are not delaying on your Azure Learning. And friends, please do like and share our videos. It's only you who can help us grow and reach more and more people who want to learn Azure Cloud. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.